Assalamu alaikum. I was not at all prepared for this video but since someone requested it, it was my responsibility to do it as soon as possible. And I'm really sorry for all those uh, people uh, who have requested me something and I have not been able to upload the video. I'm really sorry for that. I'll try my best in future. Anyways, let's begin. So this video will not be as presentable as my previous videos because I don't have time for editing. Um, but I'll try my best. So uh, we'll start off with this brown thing here. As we studied in the previous video in the maxilla that the elevations are the frenum and the depression is the vestibule. So this is the label frenum, label vestibule, buccal frenum, buccal vestibule. Okay. And then here posteriorly we have the retromolar pad. So these two are the retromolar pad. And then we have this um, frenum here also. So in the lingual side that is called as the lingual frenum. So it attaches with the tongue and in some people if the attachment is really short those people can have a uh, tongue tie and in that cases we have to incise it to correct the tongue tie all right and this uh, depression this is the alveololingual sulcus okay so this alveololingual sulcus it is divided into three parts the anterior the middle and the posterior and we'll see in a while the divisions right so we'll start off uh, by uh, this labial frenum we studied in the maxillary cast that the labial frenum in the maxilla it was inactive that means it does not have any muscle attachment but in the mandible the labial frenum has an attachment and that attachment is orbicularis oris muscle so this is kind of very active the orbicularis oris muscle is here and then this labial vestibule it has the orbicularis oris and the incisive labia inferioris so these two muscles they uh, kind of determine or limit the extent of this sulcus right or vestibule and then we have this buccal frenum so buccal frenum it uh, overlies the depressor anguli oris and it moves vertically and uh, horizontally so it needs a wide clearance otherwise when you uh, give the patient a denture and the patient makes all those movements of the mouth this denture will dislodge and then this is the buccal vestibule so the buccal vestibule um it is influenced by the buccinator muscle so the disto um so in if i had a denture i would have shown you there also but uh, since i do not have a denture right now i'm just telling you here so this uh, disto buccal area of the flange so flange is something flange of the denture goes into the sulcus okay so it kinds of the flanges will come and fit in this cast or in the mandible in the sulcus area so this would be the labial flange the buccal flange and so on i hope you got the idea so um the disto buccal area of the buccal flange it must converge rapidly to accommodate the fibers uh, the anterior fibers of the masseter muscle which will pass outside the buccinator in this region only so uh, when you properly record the area you will get something which is called the mesetric notch in the buccal flange of your denture right and then we have the retromolar pad so this retromolar pad um it is um, you know its mucosa is composed of thin non keratinized epithelium and the submucosa contains loose areolar tissue some glandular tissue and so on and uh, it has fibers of buccinator muscle buccally and superior constrictor lingually and pterygo mandibular raphe superior posteriorly all right and also it has a tendon of temporalis muscle so it limits the pressure and extension of this pad okay so it should be covered by the denture as determined by the muscle attachment and then we come to the lingual frenum so the lingual frenum the anterior attachment of the tongue is here only and it overlies the genioglossus muscle so it is extremely uh, resistant and active all right and then the alveolar lingual sulcus it is the space as i told you this is a space between the tongue and the residual ridge and extend posteriorly from this lingual frenum okay to the retromalohyoid curtain which is towards the posterior side and it accommodates the lingual flange and divided into three regions anterior middle and the posterior okay so the anterior it is anterior one the anterior region it is also called a sublingual crescent area or sublingual fold 
and it extends from this lingual frenum to the premalohyoid eminence which you will not find here you will find an impression when you take an impression you will find a eminence here which is called the premalohyoid eminence so from the lingual frenum to the premalohyoid eminence in the impression you will find the anterior region okay and then the middle region it extends from the premalohyoid fossa to the distal end of the malohyoid ridge and it will curve medially from the body of mandible so this is because of the prominence of the malohyoid ridge and the action of muscle all right so the flange of the denture which goes here will be the lingual flange so the lingual flange in this area it is made to slope means the flange will kind of slope inside so why do we uh, need to slope it because the tongue will rest on the flange and will stabilize it and we also get space uh, for uh, raising the floor of the mouth during function all right and the seal will also be maintained so that is why we kind of let the flange to maintain a slope all right and then the distal lingual region um it uh, passes into the retromalohyoid fossa and then turn laterally into the ramus all right and uh, the flange in this region you will find a s shape in the denture a uh, very famous s okay so that was our limiting structures all right then the supporting structure this area this is the buccal shelf area this is the supporting structure and also the residual alveolar ridge the slopes of the ridge not the residual alveolar ridge the slopes this slope right here and the slope lingually these slopes are also the supporting structures so we'll see why these are supporting structures first of all the buccal shelf we'll see the boundaries so medially so if this is the buccal shelf obviously medially towards the midline medially it has the crest to the ridge all right and then buccally here you will find the or you, you can say laterally you can find the external oblique ridge and then anteriorly you have this frenum this is the buccal frenum and distally you have the retromolar pad so the extent is medially we have the crest to the ridge laterally we have the external oblique ridge anteriorly we have the buccal frenum and distally we have the retromolar pad so this buccal shelf it is kind of a right angles to the masticatory forces so it is right angle okay and is covered with good you know a uh, smooth cortical bone so it can withstand the pressure that is why it is called as the supporting structure and then the residual alveolar ridge it is not a supporting structure the slopes are the supporting structure not the ridge itself because the ridge it is very you know the bone is not uh, good enough to support it right but the slopes are good enough to support it that's why now the relief area so this ridge since the bone is not good here this has to be relieved so the crest of the residual alveolar ridge it is relief area and uh, also the malohyoid ridge it has also to be relieved all right and then the mental foramen you find a foramen uh, below the roots of the premolar so this is the foramen where the uh, you know vessels and nerves will pass so we have to relieve that that as well and then we have um, if you come towards this side we have some tubercles in the mandible here these are called the genial tubercles you cannot see it here because this is a cast obviously and does not have that so the tubercles we have the superior genial tubercles and the inferior genial tubercles so the superior one it attaches to the tongue right so um and the lower one it attaches to something else i'm forgetting i'll just write it uh, in the if i edit the video i'll write it otherwise please forgive me <laughs> okay um okay so that has to be relieved the tubercles have to be relieved and then we have the torus mandibularis so what is torus mandibularis so uh, sometimes in few patients we have the bony prominences in the premolar region so the bony uh, elevations in the premolar region that is called as the torus uh, mandibularis so that has also to be relieved so we study that the crest of the uh, alveolar ridge then the malohyoid ridge okay and then uh the mental foramen okay and then uh the genial tubercles 
and the Taurus Mandibularis, these are the relief areas. Alright, so in the next video, we'll study about this landmarks in a more detailed manner. This was just a quick video. So I hope uh, I don't get any negative feedbacks. I was not at all prepared for it. So hope you like the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and comment. And thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.